Welcome to part three of the Bitcoin for Beginners video series. If you've made it this far, you've probably started mining already. In this part, I'll be covering multiple topics, pools, and more specifically, which pool you should join and why. It's never too late to switch and I encourage you to try different pools to see which work best for you. The Bitcoin market, where it may be headed in the future, and how we can capitalize on trading this currency. Lastly, we'll cover how to exchange your Bitcoin for cash so we can cash out into real U.S. dollars to buy goods or services. I'll also quickly mention how you can spend your Bitcoin as well. Now, I must say that I have no personal affiliation with any of these pools, and everything that I'm going to cover will be in the video description like always, so feel free to check it out. Okay, ready? Let's get started. So which pool should you join and why? Choosing a pool that works for you and your hardware setup is important because it will ultimately determine how much Bitcoin you'll make. Each pool has a different payout structure and pool fees associated with it, and this should be considered when choosing a pool. First, let's take a look at what pools are currently available to join and what market share they have. Here's a nice visual pie chart showing each pool and their size compared to one another. BTC Guild, clearly the largest pool and one of the original pools first created for Bitcoin. There are advantages and disadvantages to joining such a large pool, and we'll cover those in more detail in just a moment. But the biggest thing to consider with a pool of this size is the competition within it. Since the pool is so large, it can affect your luck or likelihood of you sending in correct information and receiving a reward. While this may just be speculation, I believe pool size is related to accepted answers versus stale answers, which don't count. To elaborate further, pool size will also determine pool speed, which determines how fast blocks are found and solved within the Bitcoin network. Moving forward, GHash.io. This is not a public pool that anyone can join. Instead, it's an exchange, kind of like a stock exchange. But instead of stocks, you're buying mining power instead of a physical mining rig and joining a pool with it. So the goal of this method is to reap the benefits of what that power can mine in the Bitcoin market. Their units of measure for mining power is gigahashes per second, which is 1,000 megahashes per second. So they provide the power, and you sit back and collect the profits. While this may sound attractive, I'd be wary of anything claiming to make you rich with very little effort. Of course, they take a percentage, and word on the street is that the return on investment doesn't match up with what the return would be if you owned the rig producing that amount of power. But for the reason that it's not available to join freely, this pool is out. Next is Elijah's. This is a free, no registration public pool that anyone can join. Simply point your miners to Elijah's URL, stratum.mining.elijah's.st colon three 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 four, and you can connect and start mining immediately. Typically, you need to register an account with most pools and create workers to manage your mining and your statistics. The developer of this pool, WizKid, is doing a great job, and I know a lot of people appreciate the hard work he's putting in to maintaining this pool's profitability. At 7%, BitMinter is the fourth largest pool available. Now, registration is easy, and they even provide their own mining clients for you to use, which is cool. No one else is doing that from what I'm seeing, and this can be a huge advantage for a beginner just starting out, doesn't really want to learn how to get these miners to work, you can just use their miner. However, their client is coded in Java, which may not be preferred by more advanced users, but you can point any mining client to their pool, so it really makes no difference. I don't have much experience with this pool, but I really like their setup and support. Slush's pool, coming in fifth, is 6% of the total mining market, just behind BitMinter. Now this is the pool that I have been involved with and have had great success mining it. Now, I haven't found a pool that pays more frequently and as much as Slush's pool, but this I cannot explain. Everyone will have a different experience with each pool, and Slush's may not work well for someone else. To be honest, it works for me. I like the guy who's running it, and I believe he's genuinely trying to offer the best pool option out there. Personally, I believe my success is somewhat related to the fact that I'm not in the largest pool. Rather, I'm in a somewhat smaller pool where opportunity is greater for the individual. It's also very basic and simple, no strings attached, and for this reason, I'm putting Slush's pool as my number one pick. Number two will be BitMinter, and Elijah's will round out the top three. A lot of people are wondering what the unknown pool is. This is not any specific pool. It's the amount of people that are mining on their own or have started private pools that we cannot join unless we're invited to. 
Now these private pools make up a whopping 12% of the total market and is needed in the overall picture to keep all the other pools in check. If any pool gets too large, there's a risk that they will quote, run away with the market. Some say this could happen if any pool reaches 50% of market share. But there will always be people who don't want any affiliation with any pool and will mine on their own. But more pools create more competition between them, which in turn is beneficial for the miners like us. Now we have these smaller individual pools, and these smaller pools here are also available options. However, I hate to say it, but there's usually a reason why they haven't caught on. Yes, maybe some are just starting up and take a while to build up a user base, but they move slower and find blocks slower, maybe too slow. Let's just take a look at Deep Bit, for example. This pool may only be 2% in size because they charge a 10% pool fee. So I'm not too interested in these smaller pools right now. But speaking of fees, let's take a look at a chart I found for pool fees. This is a great resource and I will also be linking to it in the video description along with everything else that I'm talking about. Now at the top here, we have our reward types and explanations. And if we scroll down just a bit, we see a nice chart outlining pool fees and payout structures as well as other useful pool information. Now you can see here is BTC Guild. If you remember, this was the largest pool in that pie chart. Under transaction fees, we can see that they're shared, but more specifically, shared on a PPL and SG basis. Now they have a 5% pay per share fee and a 3% other fee, which totals their fees at 8%. Now let's look at BitMinter. BitMinter is also shared, but only has a 1% fee. Slush's pool here, is shared but has a 2% fee. Naturally, you might think immediately, well, I want to join the pool with the lowest overall pool fee. But because each pool will produce different results, it's absolutely possible that a pool with a lower fee performs more poorly overall compared to a pool with a slightly higher fee. So if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see Elijah's. Okay, they also have a share transaction fee, 0% pay per share fee, but it's blank under other fees, and I can only imagine that they must charge some kind of fee just to cover their overhead, which is totally understandable and normal and okay in my book. But if you look at some of these other statistics for these other pools, some of them are charging as much as 10% in pay per share fees and don't even share the transaction fee. They're kept by the pool. So if you're choosing a pool for the long haul, this is really something you should consider. That concludes the first half of part three. In the next half, we'll cover the Bitcoin market and how much the price of a Bitcoin may reach, how we can capitalize on that, and then of course, how we're going to cash out our Bitcoins for US dollars, because that's something that everyone has been asking for. So please click here to continue on to the second half of part three.